what makes a rocket engine work? You might say, oh, it's the pumps or the valves or the injector, and you would be right. But on a more basic level, what makes these parts work are lots of machine and handiwork. Designing a rocket engine is fairly simple. The challenge is designing a rocket engine that is simple to manufacture, especially when you are working with a crowdfunded budget and limited production tools. And the same can be said about rockets in general. That is why you have seen us make multiple DIY machines to build the speaker rocket. The latest one we haven't talked much about is our Maho CNC mill that enables us to manufacture the speaker rocket engine in-house with our budget. Of course, we had to modify it to produce rocket parts as with many of our tools. So hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop, where we continue working on the world's only crowdfunded passenger rocket speaker. Before we start digging deeper into our new engine production, we wanted to make this video to explain the required machining capabilities for it. If you enjoy our videos on building a space program, you can help us out by becoming a supporter. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. To fly your name to space on our speaker rocket, you can head over to our website www.copsub.com, where for as little as a coffee a month, you can fund the development of our boosters, rocket engines, and space capsules. We also have a merch shop there, and leaving this video a like also helps not only us, but YouTube's algorithm to recommend you similar content that you might like so whichever way you can help we appreciate it a lot for a long time we have been looking for a CNC mill for the workshop and uh, finally we managed to find an, an old machine at a shop reseller uh, that we could get for a, a decent price so this is the machine it's a Maho model MHC 700 that we have been doing a lot of modifications to originally the main machine came without this protection ca cage around the table. Um, it had an operator panel mounted here on the side that we removed simply because the control in the operator panel was too old. Uh, that The system is a mid-80s so it couldn't quite do G-code and it could definitely not do three-dimensional G-code as we wanted to. So we took that one away from it. And then, yeah, we added the, the safety cage around the, the working area. Uh, we have also added a controllable round table to it based on parts we had in the workshop and uh, added some motor control and, and other things to it ourselves. The basic mill contains of a large table that can move in two dimensions. This one can move up and down and sideways. And then the milling head up here can move in and out for the third dimension. So to control the system after we removed the old controller from it, we have added a new PC-based system working on Linux CNC. And uh, this computer basically controls everything in the mill using some homegrown electronics in in the control panel that replaced the original PLC inside it. The uh, electronics mimics a little bit uh, the uh, cards you can get from Mesa, but it's our own design, uh, but they do the same function. This box contains all the, the hardware control for the mill, and uh, we have made a lot of changes in here. A lot of the relays from the old machine controller still in place and the old motor controller is still in place because that one is good enough for what we needed to so we didn't have to replace it. What The main thing we have added is all this stuff here on the door which is a main microcontroller and a lot of I.O. functions located around it for driving all the relays, for driving the motor drivers, uh, driving stepper controllers and, and all that kind of stuff. It also contains uh, electronics for reading the encoders on the machine uh, with a resolution of less than one micrometer. Another addition we got for the machine is a high-speed spindle. Uh, the original main spindle can only go up to about uh, 2500 RPM 
and that's not enough for some of the details that we want to make. So we went out and purchased a 24,000 RPM spindle that is to be mounted up here on this extra uh, uh, slider and uh, then we can use it for milling uh, uh, small details and especially milling uh, slanted holes in uh, metal sheets. This is one of the pieces for the next uh, engine that we are building that has been milled on the milling machine after we got the round table installed. It's been milled on both the top side and on the bottom side. 